Welcome back. So at this stage, what have we done? We have derived least squares estimation for fitting a line with only a slope and no intercept, uh, intercept, no slope. And in the last segment, the combination of the two. So how do you simultaneously, using least squares estimation, fit both slope and intercept? And we sort of got there, but it was awfully tedious. We had to do a lot of algebra. And you can see how this is not going to scale well when you start to get more unknown. So not just a line, but a parabola or a cubic or any linear model with some number of parameters. It's going to get very tedious very fast. And so what we're going to do here is, as we did at the very beginning of our data analytics section, is move from the algebraic solution to the linear algebraic solution. And hopefully, if all goes well, we will see how that generalizes in a very nice way to more and more unknowns. Okay, so let me just remind you where we left off. We are still trying to solve this problem. I have a bunch of data points. I'm trying to fit a line to it. I don't know the slope. I don't know the intercept. So here is the parameterization of the line. Y uh, vertical axis is equal to slope M X horizontal axis plus some intercept B. That, of course, is the intercept, and the slope dictates um, the orientation of the line. We started by saying we want to, we're going to minimize, by, by our choice, the vertical distance between the data point through, uh, at the position of the model and where the actual data point is. Of course, we're going to square that measure of distance because we don't care about above or below. We've now done that a few times. And then we are going to ask for the parameters m and b, slope and intercept, that minimize the sum over all the data points of this vertical distance. So this is just delta sub i right here. And we saw that that is a paraboloid, and the minimum is, that's, this is the error surface, it's this thing evaluated for all m, b, so m is one dimension, b is the other, and then the height of this mesh is the error. We want to know where the error is minimal, which of course is where the tangent plane is zero. Okay, and we solve this by manually computing the derivative of it with this with respect to m, manually computing it with respect to b, and then solving two equations and two unknowns. Yeah, and it was fine, it worked, but again, tedious. Let's see if we can make it less tedious. So let me start by taking this error function and just expanding it out a little bit. I'm going to leave off the squared now just to keep things simple. So inside of here is what? It's mx1 plus b minus y1. I'm just going back to the delta. So let's go back to that delta and think a little bit about um, how to write this in a linear algebraic way. So I've just got a whole bunch of these for each um, index i. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's see. I've got the error function up here, and I've extracted out just the deltas before I do the squaring and before I do the summing. So I'm going to try to express this linear algebraically, and then I'm going to come back and deal with the squaring and the summation. Okay, let me say, let me posit that this equation right here, mx1 plus b minus y1, can be expressed using this vector multiplication. So what am I doing here? I've taken the x1, which is that right there, I've packed it in with a 1, I've got, that's a row vector, 1 by 2. I'm making a column vector with the unknowns m and b, and I'm subtracting that from y1. So first of all, let's just make sure that our vector notation is correct. This is a row vector, it's of size 1 by 2. This is a column vector, it's of size 2 by 1. What is the product of these two? Well, those inner ones had better match, they do, and so the product is a scalar. Sure, it's going to be x1 times m plus b times 1, and then that's going to, of course, be minus a scalar, which is a 1 by 1. So good, the, the vector um, uh, algebra actually works. We're, we're multiplying the vectors correctly, and then we're subtracting a scalar from a scalar. Good. Now, let's make sure we see why these are equivalent. Let's do the vector uh, multiplication. So it's row times column. So it's m times x1, there it is right there, plus b times 1, there it is right there, and then, of course, just minus y1. So this little guy right here is equal to that little guy. Algebra, linear algebra. Okay, nothing complicated. We've done that before. Now let's do it over and over and over again. So here's the equation for the second one. What's changed? Here on the left-hand side, I've got x2, 1. And on the right-hand side, I've got y2. But that's the same. Well, sure, it's the same. Because m is the same in all these equations, and b is the same. All that's changing is the data. And so on the nth one, I've got xn, 1, times mb, minus yn. So these, all of these vector multiplications correspond to these deltas, right? So will you allow me then to say, to notice that 
there is a common vector in each of the equations the same way there's a common uh, uh, variable in all of those equations. Well, that's interesting because that suggests that I can probably simplify these into one matrix equation. What is that? Well, let's take that MB and pack it into a vector right there. And now what I've done here, now I don't have a row vector. I've got a bunch of row vectors packed into a matrix. N by 2, 2 by 1, N by 1. So what I've done, I've taken all these values, Y1, Y1, and I've packed them into a vector. Just pack them all out. I've taken all these rows, and I've packed them in, but this is common. And so now I've got x1, 1 times mb is equal to y1, x2, 1 times mb is equal to y2, and so on and so forth. And so I've unpacked, I've packed in, rather, these individual vector equations into one matrix equation. And again, here it is, row times column minus scalar, row times column minus scalar. Yep, go down. Row times column minus scalar. Row times column minus scalar. So it all works. Okay, so that's nice. So what have I done? I haven't really gotten to where I want to be yet, but I'm, I'm getting there. So what have I done is I've taken sort of the inner parts of this quadratic error function, and I've expressed it as a matrix. And notice here that I haven't gotten sort of all the way to where I need to be, right? Because what do I want? Now I want to do, so what is this, by the way? Let's be clear. This is a vector, because this is a matrix, uh, uh, n by 2, 2 by 1, minus n by 1. So that's going to be an n by 1 vector, yeah? And what's in each element of the vector? Well, it's just all of these individual deltas. Yeah, so I've just created a, a vector that has all the delta, 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 delta. So that's a step in the right direction, but what do I want to do now? Well, I want to square all of those, and then sum them up. And of course, I want to do that linear algebraically. It's not immediately obvious how we do that here, but in the next segment, what we're going to do is we're going to start here, and we're going to see if we can get to the full quadratic error function, expressing the whole thing in matrix form. And then the question you want to be asking is, well, why? Why am I going to this trouble? And the reason you will see is that it makes the differentiation and the solving of it much, much cleaner and extendable to higher dimensions. So when we come back, let's start there, and we'll deal with the squaring and the summing. See you in a minute.